Hey there, it's Vinny for another market update. Um, I posted for you guys to post some tickers to have a look at. So um, I've just picked a few out of the list that you sent just to take a look through. But um, I guess just, just to start off with, let's take a look at the indices. Um, just recap what we did last week and what to look out for for this week. So if you remember last week, we were looking at this trend line. We were right up against this this resistant trend line here and we were posing the question uh, you could see some some red candles here as well um, this would have been a, a good place um, for for people to, to risk manage um, with, with a stop up here so you know was this an area that we could break down from uh, was it a trap or was it a, or could we squeeze some shorts here and we, we did the latter we, we ended up squeezing some shorts particularly in the last couple of days of the the week um it was the the end of the quarter as well um last week as well so we had some kind of last minute fund rebalancing and, and it, it's pretty clear what type of stocks they bought uh, and we had some some kind of squeezing pattern here so we've also opened futures with a gap pretty significant gap um half a percent um <clears throat> so some of that uh, behavior last week has spilled in and likely some some more squeezing can happen early next week so you know we've said this for a couple of weeks the structure with with ES doesn't doesn't look bearish at all um, we hit some volatility here um, thought we could get a, a deeper pullback but we we managed to hold trend we never made a lower low made another higher high here made another higher low another higher high so the structure is still intact for this kind of trending move in, in ES. Um, and until we break a support, and now you can track um, this level here as the uh, the next support that we made, as long as we continue uh, making higher highs and, and, and higher lows, um, we are still in this trend and we, we won't see a pullback to, to levels that we're expecting until that happens. So ES still looks pretty bullish. Uh, if you look at NQ, uh, again, we were at this kind of resistant level. This, um, and I've just got these. Let's just flip these around a little bit, so it makes sense. We retraced sixty-one point eight percent. We hit um, a, um, a lot of resistance there. There's also some price action here, um, some supply. Um, so we closed the week kind of just right at the resistant area. So while ES broke out uh, above to new highs. Uh, NQ kind of ended up in this resistant area, so we're kind of looking for NQ to push on. Um, it does look a little bit weaker than the ES right now, and that's pretty consistent. Um, so I'd still be cautious in NQ, particularly here as we're heading back up to, to all time highs. There's quite a lot of um, volume, you know, up here and, and in tech stocks that are still down for 30, 40 percent. And there's, there's pro probably quite a bit of supply in, in technology. So I'm not expecting technology, technology stocks just to, um, you know, continue just pushing higher. I think I think there could be some some more volatility. We may hit this um, next Fibonacci level and we may get some some chop and um, I just just be uh, still be a little bit cautious on technology. I think there's other sectors that uh, are probably worthwhile looking at. Um, so it's a similar story with the Russell as well. We kind of ended the week uh, strongly, but still underneath resistance, and we're at actually gapped to the resistant level here. So so just let's see what price does around here. Uh, there's no you know with with all of these ES. Uh, NQ Russell, we're not entering up here, right? You're not entering a position in the S and P five hundred up here, right? Uh, it looks bullish. We wait for the next lower high to get built, and we enter there, right? And similarly with NQ, we don't buy into resistances. Um, let's see if we can hold this level. Um, if we can, you know, accumulate around this level before breaking out, and we can manage our risk that way. Um, so that's the indices um, for this week. Um, and let's take a look at some more individual stocks. And I think looking at individual stocks is more interesting because while the indices have been, you know, chopping around all over the place, um, this is a stock picker's market, I think. So uh, there are stocks that 
will perform better than others. <clears throat> so if you think NQ is going higher, just putting it in a tech stock is not going to uh, does not mean you're going to ride that NQ going higher. I think you have to pick the right stocks. Um, and we've been bullish on Google for weeks and we finally got that breakout we were looking for. I think what we said around here was wait for the 50 day moving average to catch up with price. It did catch up last week, touched it a couple of times and we springboarded off that 50 day moving average. So let's see what Google does. It's still underneath the all time high and let's see if we can can break that and, and start trending. Um, Google had back to back incredible earnings releases and it, it really hasn't rallied off the back of both of those. So um, this one can move, um, it can move, you know, pretty considerably, I think. Facebook, uh, I think I had some news this weekend, but that's continued to rally as we expected. I think we were around here, we were looking at this uh, as a support to continue going higher up to targets above you know, three, 320 area. Um, we also like Qualcomm, 50-day uh, moving average here. It looks like a the start of a weekly trend. So Qualcomm has had, a, you know, it only just broke out of its um, 2000 bubble high, right? So this has built what is a two-decade base around these these price areas. So we've got a weekly breakout. We, uh, you know, first impulse, second correction, third impulse. So now we're building a consolidation. Um, so we're looking for probably some, some kind of ranging behavior around here. So maybe we move back up here and make another dip and we break out higher. So this looks like a weekly trend and weekly trends, you know, <coughs> can, can, can run for quite a considerable, uh, considerable amount of time. So we like Qualcomm quite a lot here. Um, still very cheap. It actually gives you a dividend as well. Uh, we still like FireEye. It's still consolidating here nicely. It's not breaking lower. It's just kind of hanging out here. It's just accumulating. There's so much volume here. This one's going to explode at some point. We still like GM. Uh, still riding this beautiful trend line, the 50 day moving average. We like energy stocks as well. I think energy is going to have a huge year this year. Um, so um, we've just broken out of this kind of resistance area here. So we found some support. I think as energy stocks can continue um, leading the market for, for a lot of the year. Um, so that's energy. So let's take a look at some of the stocks that you guys listed. So. This one was mentioned a few times. Discovery, I think I mentioned this last week actually. Um, so Discovery again has been, you know, it had this wild run up until 2013, went into this bear market. Um, and it's kind of been accumulating, particularly here uh, post COVID has been accumulating significant volume. Take a look at the volume profile accumulated here. Smart money got in here. Um, and then smart money got stupid. So I, I, you guys have probably heard about that fund. Uh, they went 5x leverage, buying discovery all the way up and then they got liquidated and, and, and they're out of the game. So you've got a, a great, pro, you know, retested this breakout area, pretty much bang on. Um, usually parabolic moves like this retrace around 80% of the move. So we retrace, you know, about 70 odd percent. So. I think, you know, when, when things like this happen, the, the significant volume up here, there's a lot of holders that are looking to get out of the stock. So this doesn't gonna, isn't going to recover straight back to the prices that we saw. Um, I think you can be patient here. Um, you, can be, you can start a position if you like here. Uh, but this looks like a, it does look like a bit of a bear flag, if I'm honest, um, which is normal. Uh, so don't be surprised if we got a... I move here to break this low. Um, so we do something like that, break the low, um, hit the 200 day moving average and bounce. So you can you can buy if you if you really want to get in discovery. Um, just fundamentally discovery is an interesting stock. They just released uh, discovery <clears throat> plus which is a streaming platform. Um, there's not many competitors out there in, in the you know, uh, in their kind of space of documentaries and people uh, do want to consume those types of um, 
uh, that type of content. I, I would say about that type of content, I think people want to consume it, but they don't generally want to pay for it is the only thing I would say. But still, I think it's, um, it is it is bullish for the stock. So usually when you get a big move like this, it doesn't happen in one wave. You, you at least get three sets of waves. So we've got one wave, we've got the second wave. So let's wait for the third wave. That's the wave we buy around this 200 day moving average, 786 Fib level. Um, 31 30 I would put alerts there to buy discovery and buy it uh, pretty big I think that's a, a great buying entry in, in discovery so that's an interesting stock that's given us a good opportunity this is one I like um, John Deere um, and you can think of John Deere now as um, uh, a play on autonomous in agriculture, like the Tesla of, of ag agriculture. They're a technology company. Don't think of them as a industrial. They are a, um, a technology company, a, a beautiful buy if you bought it in the hundreds, um, just 4X from there. So looking for a pullback to the 50 day moving average um, is what I'm waiting for. They gave you a chance there. Never, it's never, hasn't really ever given you another chance in this entire run. Um, I think it's been, uh, if you look at the 20 day moving average, it's been kind of following that. It's kind of getting parabolic. So, um, you know, with parabolic moves, we get uh, trend lines that start to get steeper and steeper. And John Deere has a bit of that look about it of steepening trend lines. Um, as, as a lot of investors start to realize what a great company John Deere actually is. And that's going to become a software company um, in the near future with their autonomous um, vehicles. But I, I think this is probably um, pretty significantly extended. So at least a 50 day moving average. And I actually don't think that's going to hold. This is this run is too he uh, heavy. So let's have a look at the Fibonacci levels, see what the first Fib area is. So I, we're at least going to pull back to the first Fib, which is... 326 if that is a top here 326 I'd look out for a buy um, maybe we get down to yeah to, but by the time we get there the 200 day moving average is probably around this 38 percent level so that's probably another area 285 but just just look at this volume look the smart money got in here um, and and there's you know any of these 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 supports are, are, are weak supports so be careful I, I do think this is again a weekly a weekly trending breakout uh, with the first this this wave here is just crazily extended um, so I won't be surprised with at least a thirty eight percent correction on that move um, but I I'll be buying John Deere heavily if we ever got if we ever got that opportunity. BA was another stock that you guys um, were interested in. Um, I'm not. I've not been as bullish or uh, as interested in BA as some of the others. Um, I, I think the easy money's been made now. Um, you know, these prices here, clear value, uh, and now that we've retraced fifty percent of this entire move, I think you know we're in the upper end of. Um, BA's price chart and I, and I think you're, we're going to head into quite a lot of supply particularly up here and I'm just not interested in longing at these levels I think BA was heavily overpriced up here um, you know that was a result of buying back stock frankly um, so I I think what we're I've highlighted a couple areas I think this is a um, this 61.8 percent retracement of the COVID dump I think there's here, look at the volume, there's pretty significant volume here. And I think there's a lot of supply. Um, and I don't think you want to be long BA anywhere around the 300s mark. You may, I think there's still a, a little bit of room, maybe 20% higher in the stock. Um, but in terms of risk reward, I'm not interested in BA. Uh, Teladoc, I am interested in. I think this is a great stock. Um, it's given you a nice entry here. So we've got a nice kind of supply it's a really messy chart frankly teledoc i mean look at it it's just trended wild swings kind of pull back um final excess range and then uh, kind of a what looks like actually this looks like a final excess so um this looks like a pullback abc pullback 
So first impulse for ABC to pull back final excess and then what we're likely probably gonna do, take a look at the Fastly chart because I think this is probably gonna do something similar. So just kind of hang out at these price areas for, for a fair amount of time um, before at some point making a trending move higher. I, do, I am bullish this whole sector telehealth, uh, particularly with the acquisition they made with Livongo. Um, I just think it's it's run up. It's $30 billion market cap, um, does around a billion dollars in revenue. Uh, so probably needs at least a year for just the fundamentals to catch up with the price. Uh, and But if you wanted to buy on a long-term basis, I think this 170 area, I think is a, is a great area. It just If it does break this support, which it could, um, if it does break that support, just average down, I think you'll be, you'll be fine uh, to hold Teladoc for, for the long run. Uh, butterfly is it's pretty difficult to do technical analysis on because there's not a lot of price action. I do own this. I own, I bought it around here, $14, $15. So it's pretty close to my entry price. I think if it gets back there, you could start in a position. Um, I think there's a lot of support there. <clears throat> um, I think it's a innovative company. And um, I think over time, if you hold it for the long run, I think it'll be a, a good stock to hold. Um, someone mentioned the ARC FinTech innovation and yeah, I mean, look at this, look at this move, 17 bucks to 65. So three, three X for an ETF. That's pretty astounding. Um, so it looks like a bullish impulse. We're getting a pullback here. Um, maybe that's the end of the pullback. You could wait for, um, if you bought here, that's probably a good buy. It's a, it corresponds to a 618 retracement as well. So that was a good buy, 47, if you bought that. Um, I just think with a lot of these ARC ETFs, they're not gonna go, you know, start trending straight away. I think there's gonna be a period of of range um, as you kind of digest this this entire move. Just don't, uh, just don't expect this to happen straight away. It's gonna take some time, but um, I do trust ARC um, and Kathy Wood, and I think she's got a team that think completely differently to a lot of other fund managers and um, I think you want some exposure to, to Kathy Wood and her team. Uh, Lemonade is one I really like. I, I really like this stock. Um, I think anything, I think in the next 10 years, AI is, is going to be huge for the market and um, kind of how EV has been, um, every EV stock is, is pumped. Uh, at some point in the next five years, I think you're going to get to a point where any AI stock is going to pump. It's just, um, uh, it's at the cusp of kind of um, revolutionizing a, a lot of different industries. A a and Lemonade is using AI in the insurance space. Um, it's It's got a good market share in a couple of areas, but they're expanding into other different insurance markets, uh, pet insurance for one and, and some others. So, um, they they've made a success out of in a couple of different couple of areas, and I, I think they've got the uh, experience and uh, technology to to take it into different areas. So you want a piece of this. Usually with IPOs, um, you'll see it retrace back to the IPO price. The IPO price of Lemonade was twenty nine dollars. I actually picked up by uh, Lemonade around here, uh, and again here, I actually took it off around eighty bucks or eighty ninety dollars here when I bought it there. I I took profit here, and I totally missed. This entire run, it was a double from where I sold it, and I have a lot of regret. Um, it's right back to where I sold it again. Um, so I am interested in Lemonade. Um, I was, I have some alerts. I was looking at this seventy-five dollar level. Um, never quite got there, which was, uh, and maybe my fibs are kind of off. But it's a bit. It's a seventy-eight point six retracement. I still think there's a chance we dip there. But maybe we just dip below that low, and I'll pick it up at in the seventies. I think. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we did head to the IPO price. Like I said, most IPOs do um, retrace back to the the IPO price. I just I don't think Lemonade will though. I think it's there's so much demand for this company. That, um, I don't think that will happen. Um, it's it's had its lockup. I think it had its lockup. Um, somewhere around here um, where, where there's high volume you saw the volume you can see the volume start to pick up I think that's where the lockup happened so you can expect a couple of months after the lockup of, um, of volatility as insiders you know take some profits 
Um, the other problem with Lemonade is they've done two secondary offerings now. And that just, you know, and that's a problem with the market as a whole. So many companies are doing offerings. Um, I think it's going to dilute the market in somewhat. So that just be careful. Uh, Lemonade, fantastic company, but they need capital and, and they may take capital from the market. Uh, I think, but long term wise, if you bought this at 70, 80 bucks, I think you've done, you'll, you'll do well. I think this one could run um, in the long term. So good stock. Similarly with SC, I think this was a nice buying area. This 38.2 retracement of this entire move. I think this is just, again, this is just a stock that needs to kind of work out this crazy move that it's made. Um, and I mean, look, stocks like SE rode COVID. They rode that wave, um, e-commerce and payments, uh, online payments. Um, but but just don't expect that kind of growth to continue as the economy opens up, right? That doesn't mean it's a bad stock or a bad company. It just means I think your gains are going to be limited in, in SE. You could play this range, though, from the 38.2% to that's a pretty, pretty wide range. I mean, you're talking uh, 40, 50% uh upside and and just so it's a nice range to play um hold some for the long term sc is going to be a, a huge huge company um going forward ccif was another one i think a few a few of you mentioned um we bought 12 bucks i still own some i i think i bought a thousand shares at 12 bucks i sold gradually i sold 700 shares on this ride up so i've got 300 left uh free free rolling so i don't really care um i would be interested in rebuying this again actually um it's retreat you'll see my uh 786 level i i really like this fib level um in the long term charts particularly when picking up stocks that have had wild moves and picking them up when they've uh, significantly retraced so if you if you buy this twenty-two dollar level, I think you've done. I think you'll do well. I do think this support will hold. Maybe um, it, you know, traps some, takes some stops, you know, and does that potentially. But I, <clears throat> I really do think this twenty dollar, twenty-one, twenty-two dollar level is strong support um, in this stock. So if you wanted to buy a bit of Lucid for the long term, I think you'll you'll get a good price at twenty bucks. Um, so I think that's enough. Uh, it's a pretty long video. So um, yeah, good luck trading. Be careful. Um, just be careful. Thank you. Just just remember risk reward um, is what I would say. If you bought these levels here, good job. Uh, take some profits up here. Um, uh, if we dip back down here again, you can you can look for some swing longs again. So just uh, when you when you're playing chop like this just just remember the basics of of, of, of technical analysis you've got this um, kind of zones as we're trending high like this this is your buy zone uh, when you're in the the lower end of the trend and this is your sell take profit zone right and you've got to think about it in the same way um, when you're thinking about swinging along if, you, if you're going heavy all in swing longs when NQ's up here you're doing it wrong right the time to buy it was down was down there um, so that's how I'm gonna end it so uh, good luck this week and hopefully we have a, a green week thanks